All the stories say the man who lives here has secret knowledge. I am Vlad Dracula Tepesh, and I do not get many visitors. What have you to trade for my knowledge, Lisa from Lupu? Greetings, viewers, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we are diving into the mysterious and captivating world of one of literature's most iconic characters, Count Dracula. Join me as we uncover the long and fascinating story behind this infamous vampire. Count Dracula, the bloodthirsty vampire who has enthralled readers for generations, was brought to life by Irish author Bram Stoker in his 1897 novel, Dracula. But did you know that Stoker drew inspiration from various historical figures and legends to create this enigmatic character? It is said, one of the primary influences for Bram Stoker was Vlad the Impaler, a 15th century ruler from Wallachia, a region in present-day Romania. Vlad III, also known as Vlad Dracula, was notorious for his brutal methods and reputation for impaling his enemies on long stakes. Stoker likely borrowed his name and some elements of his ruthless nature to shape the character of Dracula. But the others said that Stoker drew inspiration from the Balkan region. Because of their belief in the existence of vampires, they were almost certain of their existence. As during Stoker's study, he was writing all notes in a book of diary. As he was writing, he did not refer to Vlad the Impaler in his diary. Stoker was also inspired by the mysterious and haunting landscapes of Eastern Europe. The Carpathian Mountains, with their dense forests and eerie ambiance, provided the perfect backdrop for Dracula's castle. Though Stoker never visited the region, his vivid descriptions and imaginative storytelling captured the imagination of readers worldwide. Bram Stoker was aware of the racial differences between the Romanians and the Siculus race, which is the race of the owner of Hungarian blood, because the hero of his story, Dracula, is of the Hungarian race unlike Prince Vlad the Impaler. By the way, Bram Stoker wanted to name the character Count Wimper, and this is evidence that he did not mean Vlad the Impaler as an inspirational character. In Bram Stoker's novel Dracula, the titular character, Count Dracula, is depicted as a centuries-old vampire with a complex and mysterious background. According to the narrative, Dracula hails from Transylvania, a region in present-day Romania, known for its haunting landscapes and rich folklore. It is implied that he has lived for hundreds of years, accumulating knowledge and power over time. His long life has granted him an array of supernatural abilities and immortality. Dracula's vampiric nature is intricately linked to his ability to sustain himself by feeding on the blood of the living human, superhuman strength, and the power to transform into various forms, including as such as a wolf, bat, or mist to aid his nocturnal activities. The novel begins with the diary and letters of Jonathan Harker, a young and ambitious solicitor from England. He set off on a business trip to the mysterious and distant land of Transylvania. His purpose was to finalize the real estate transactions of a grand estate in England, which belonged to a reclusive nobleman named Count Dracula. Harker was a diligent and ambitious professional, excited about the opportunity to travel to a foreign land and conduct business on behalf of his firm. As he embarks on his journey to Castle Dracula, he was documenting his journeys in diary entries and letters. As he arrived in the Carpathian Mountains, the landscape grew increasingly foreboding. The locals warned him of the dangers that lurked in the region, speaking of supernatural beings and evil spirits. However, Jonathan, driven by his professional duty, pressed on, determined to fulfill his task and return home. Harker was walking on the road in the middle of the night after he got out of the hotel despite people warning him not to go out on this road at night. During when he was walking, he felt that someone was watching him. In the middle of the road, Harker saw a wolf, so he ran away from it until he saw an iron fence and jumped over it, only to discover that it was an old cemetery. As he walked through the cemetery, he saw a huge gravestone moving from its place, and suddenly a vampire appeared from the grave, but she was chained with iron chains that prevented her from attacking Harker. Meanwhile, a big wolf comes to kidnap Harker at great speed and bring him to the Count's castle. Upon his arrival at Castle Dracula, Jonathan was met with an eerie atmosphere. The castle itself seemed ancient and dilapidated, draped in a haunting stillness. The Count, a tall and pale figure, received Jonathan cordially, but with an air of sinister grace. Harker couldn't help but feel an underlying sense of unease. Dracula treated Harker with an aristocratic, until one day one of Dracula's wives decided to feed on Harker's blood. So she attacked him, 
so Dracula saved him from her. And this made Dracula force Harker to stay in the castle and prevent him from leaving it forever, so as not to reveal Dracula's secrets. As the days passed, Harker became more and more aware of the Count's peculiar habits and nocturnal activities. He noticed the Count's aversion to sunlight, his absence during the day, and his strange ability to move silently. Jonathan's curiosity and mounting concern prompted him to explore the castle further, looking for answers to the mysteries that surrounded him. He discovered hidden chambers and secret passageways, revealing the Count's macabre collection of ancient relics and coffins filled with soil. In his investigations, Harker stumbled upon a group of imprisoned women, seemingly under the control of the Count. It was then that he realized the true nature of the monster he was dealing with. Count Dracula was a vampire, feasting on the lifeblood of innocent victims to sustain his immortality. Dracula decides to travel to England to spread his curse, and he brought a soil inside a chest from his castle with him, and this soil helps him regain his strength during the day, where he begins to get acquainted with the English society and decides to start with Harker's house, which he imprisoned in his castle. And this is what made Dracula get to know Mina, Harker's fiancée, and her friend Lucy, as the Count began to watching them. And one day he decided to feed on Lucy's blood. He entered her room at night and sucked her blood, as he kept doing. That every night, he did not intend to kill her, but wanted her to be cursed with the curse of vampires and to be his servant. Lucy was a beautiful girl. Three people wanted to marry her. Seward the psychiatrist, Holy Maud, and Morris. Lucy's condition became very bad, and when these three saw her, they decided to stop competing for her love and decided to help her all. Seward, the psychiatrist, calls on an old psychiatrist, Abraham Van Helsing, who specializes in paranormal cases and has studied vampire behavior for many years. Van Helsing and his companions quickly realize that Lucy has been bitten by vampire and is under his control. They embark on a mission to save her soul and rid her of the curse of vampirism. Their efforts involve various methods, including the use of garlic, crucifixes, and a wooden stake driven through Lucy's heart, effectively ending her existence as a vampire. During this time, Harker was terrified, but determined to escape and warn others of the vampire's plans, Harker began planning his getaway. During Count's absences, he managed to escape the castle and make his way back to his country. Harker returns home in a state of extreme fatigue, which makes his fiancée, Mina, seek help from Dr. Van Helsing. During Van Helsing's treatment of Harker, he knows about everything that happened while he was in Dracula's castle and knows all of Dracula's plans. And here, all the evidence begins to gather to know that the one who did all this is the vampire Count Dracula. Van Helsing knows from Harker that Dracula has a plan, which is to buy many houses in England and distribute the boxes of soil he brought with him to those houses, so that these houses will be his hideouts in the city of London where they started a campaign to chase Dracula and knew that he had bought a house near the house of Dr. Seward. So the group infiltrated the house to discover the presence of all the soil boxes before he distributed them to the houses, and they put garlic and silver in the boxes. This is what weakened Dracula and reduced his strength and movement because he could not use the soil in the chests. Dracula sets his sights on Mina, seeing her as a potential new victim and a means to gain revenge on those who have thwarted his plans. Dracula's influence over Mina grows, and she becomes a target of his power. Dracula attacks Mina, and sucks her blood, and turns her into a vampire, which makes her attack Dracula and suck his blood as well. And this is what created a bond between Mina and Dracula. Van Helsing performs the process of hypnosis for Mina, treats her and returns her to normal, and before that he knows from her through the spiritual bond between her and Dracula, that Dracula has returned to his castle again. Professor Abraham Van Helsing and his group embark on a dangerous mission to Castle Dracula in Transylvania to confront and ultimately kill the vampire Count Dracula. Upon realizing the grave threat posed by Dracula and his plans to spread his curse, Van Helsing gathers a group of allies, including Jonathan Harker, Quincy Morris, Dr. John Seward, and Arthur Holmwood. They travel to Transylvania with the intention of finding Dracula in his castle and putting an end to his reign of terror. Upon reaching Castle Dracula, the group devises a plan to kill the vampire. Armed with knowledge of vampire weaknesses and Van Helsing's expertise, they enter the castle prepared for a confrontation. Van Helsing takes the lead, using his knowledge of vampire lore to guide their actions. The group employs various tools and methods to weaken and incapacitate Dracula. They utilize crucifixes, garlic, and sacred items to repel him and limit his powers. 
In a climactic battle within the castle, the group confronts Dracula directly. They use their combined strength and determination to overpower the vampire. Van Helsing and the others manage to expose Dracula to sunlight, a fatal vulnerability for vampires, causing him great pain and weakening him significantly. Recognizing the opportunity, the group seizes the moment and drives a wooden stake through Dracula's heart, a method known to ensure the permanent death of a vampire. With this final blow, Dracula's reign comes to an end. After Dracula's death, the group ensures that his body is desecrated, preventing any chance of resurrection. They perform rituals to ensure his eternal rest, such as placing holy wafers and consecrated items within the coffin. And here the episode ends. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe button and activate the notifications bell. For more videos visit our channel. Thanks for watching. Meet you soon in another video.